The require data entry macro does just that. It requires data to be entered into a field, well, of your choosing, like let's say the customer name. When somebody adds a new customer, I don't want them to forget to put in the customer name. So when they try to save it without the name there, I can cancel the event so it doesn't save it until they actually type in a name. So to do this, let's go ahead and right click in a blank area of the form, go to the design view, and we're going to be creating a macro in the form known as an embedded macro. Instead of having it out here, out of bed, it's going to be in bed, proprietary to this form so nobody else can use it, but just, again, this form only. So to bring up the property sheet where we can embed the macro, let's go ahead and double click in a blank area. It's got to be the property sheet with the selection type for the form. And we want to come down here to the event tab and where it says before update. So before somebody saves the record and updates it with the changes or the new record, it's going to check the macro to make sure, in this example, that we actually have a name in the customer name field. So let's go ahead and click on the build button to select the macro builder and click okie dokie. And there we go. The first thing I want to do is to add a comment to this macro. So if somebody else working in the database wants to know what I'm doing here, let's go ahead and let them know. Type in CO, there we go, comment, hit the tab key, and it's going to be to require data entry in the customer name field. So that's the overall comment of what we're going to be accomplishing here. And let's add another comment for the first action, which is, let me come in here and type in another comment. If customer name is left blank, do not save the record. So that's going to be the comment for the next action, the operative word being if. So let's come down below out of this comment. Well, I can click off and we got our two comments, the overall comment. And then for the first action comment, let's come and click in here and type in if, hit the tab key. And we want to do an if then. So the first thing is if, if what? Well, if the, start typing, there we go, customer name. And you can see we've got a couple of them. One's labeled, one's the text box. But if you don't have them labeled correctly, that's okay because there's a pop-up that lets you know what it is. And we want the text box. And you can use the down arrow key, go to the next one if they have the same name and go, oh, that one's the label. Don't want that one. Want the text box. So with that highlighted, hit the tab key and it pops it open, puts it in the square brackets. And then we want to see if the customer name is null or is empty. So if it is, then the next action is cancel the event. And there you go, cancel event, which means don't save the record. Hit the tab key, and there you go. So after it cancels the event, like if you got 20 fields or 50 fields, and they're in field 49 or something, in any case, what we can do is we can use the go-to control that will take them from that last field and put them right back into that field where the data is required to be entered. I mean, to help them out, you know, so they don't have to, you know, scroll over and click in that field. So let's go ahead and do, well, let's do a comment here. Let them know what we're doing here for the next action. Comment, hit the tab key. Go to the customer name field. Great. Let's go ahead and click the action, get out of that comment. And let's type in go. There we go. Go to control. Hit the tab key and it says, okay, what's the name of the control? It's going to be the cus. Type in the first couple letters, customer name, text box, hit the tab key. Great. So we've got the overall comment, the comment for the first action. If the customer name is left blank, don't save the record or in code terms, cancel the event. Don't update it, don't accept changes or the new record. And then when it does that, it's going to go to the customer name field, the go to control, our go to guy. And so let's come up here, click save and take it for a test drive and close out of the macro. And it's an embedded macro because it says so here, see. And then let's come up here and save our form. Close out of the property sheet. In any case, right click and go to the form view and take it for a test drive. So when I come down here and create a new record, let's type in a customer number 133, hit the tab key. Oops, I skipped the customer name and I'm typing in an address. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. Let me go ahead and save it. Now my cursor's flashing here, right? So when I hold down the shift key and hit enter to save it, it doesn't save it and it takes the cursor to the customer name field. And I'm like, oh, this is haunted or this thing's freaking out on me. Why is it doing that? I don't want to enter in a customer name. Or maybe if they figured it out, they're like, oops, I forgot. In any case, it's doing its job. It's canceling the event. It's not accepting any changes or saves until I go ahead and type in a customer name. Now, for front end users, that may not be helpful if this is the first experience with your database and you're like, oh, this thing's freaking out on me. Instead, we can add a message to our macro that when it cancels the event and takes them back to that field, we can have a pop-up that says, hey man, what do you think you're doing? You gotta enter in a customer name, so please do so. Just like that. 
So go ahead and watch the next training video to learn about how to add a message to our macro. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.